I'll go in there and start hitting drums around too and just like warming up. So by the time the shows were happening, I was butt. And then I would do stuff like go like, you know, go to Memphis drum shop or come here before a show and like do an in-store and they just, you know, want you to play. So I would actually use that as practice. So I would practice, and then next thing you know, go to the gig, and they're like, this dude is killing. They're like, because I've been playing all day. You know what I'm saying? So I just took advantage of my time. Like, you know, a lot of people, they forget that they have 24 hours in the day. <laughs> you were joking earlier about taking people's licks. Yeah. Uh, do you have an example of, like, a lick you got from Dennis Chambers? And more importantly, though, do you think you have any licks that people have taken from you? For sure. Dude, I watch YouTube and laugh. Like, if I laugh at YouTube, I'm like, God, that's my lick, dude. But like, I can't. Like, I still lick from, I can't give you an example because everything I play is stolen. So, my, my whole life is an example of a, 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 a thievery a or something. But like, um, I don't know. I would still, I steal stuff from people, but I switch it up too. Like, I'll switch it up where you won't know. So, you would be like, you know. Some people switch it up and do it verbatim. And like, that's what's weak when it's like, oh, dude, I just saw that dude do it verbatim. And like, I don't know, I just try to, you know, I steal everything. Like, I'll go and watch a Jimi Hendrix tape, and he don't play the drums, I'll steal his energy. I'm like, God, look, you see this dude on there? Like, just the energy and the, the vibe he has, like, is worth stealing. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like that. Like, you don't always got to steal a lick. It don't even got to be anything from drums. Sometimes I look at art or I watch a movie, and it inspires me to do stuff. Like, I'm not always inspired by drummers. And most time, mostly lately, I haven't been inspired by many drummers, and I can almost count the guys I listen to that's alive on my two hands. But I don't know. Um, I listen to Tom and Peg. I listen uh, to uh, Lamb of God. I listen to a lot of metal drummers. I listen to, um, I still go back and listen to, like, BSOP, Punk Wiz. I still listen to Billy Cobham and, like, Nard and Michael Walden. And, and like, Vinny and all, I was listening to the same stuff. Like, um, when I went to Berkeley, the thing that was cool about Berkeley is they had a crazy library of music. So I would go and be like, hmm, drummer of the day, Roy Haynes. And they would go and have a library of Roy Haynes, and not just CDs, but videos. So I would sit there, like, I treated Berkeley as a giant practice. Like, I didn't like, some people were like, I'm going to the theater, see this. I'm like, I'm going to go practice. It's like, I would, you know, because it was cold. I'm from California, I'm not used to that. I'm out there, I don't want to move. I don't want to do anything. All I wanted to do is sit where it was warm, and it was warm in the practice room. So I was chilling there. I would go from the library to the practice room, to the Thai restaurant, back to the practice room. <laughs> Any other questions? What attracts you to Thomas Hake? What me to Thomas Hake? The fact that he's over here playing like over the bar line, and I don't know, I don't have a double pedal. Or, I just like that band, I like Meshuggah. And I think that like, the thing that's cool about Meshuggah is they're doing something that's kind of different, but a lot of people are trying to bite him too. So to watch him do it is kind of cool because he's like one of the originators of that kind of style. I like a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Like, you know, I mentioned Travis Barker. I like him because I understand why the most, you know, some 13-year-old kid who doesn't know anything about music likes him. And I can appreciate that. Like, I can appreciate things about people that have nothing to do with chops. Like, some people just got a crazy backbeat or some people can just, you know, some people got, you know, all the old school Motown feels. And I'm like, oh, that's the old school Motown right there. Make me think of you know, Benny Benjamin or something. But, you know, just I like people for all kinds of reasons. Can you tell us about the first time playing with Mars Volta? Yeah, um, the first time I played with Mars Volta, I went, it was Halloween, and they told me, let's come, come hang out. And I was starting a party because it was Halloween, and I get there and Flea's like, um, <laughs> Flea is a witch, and he's like swinging from the top, and I'm like, this is gonna be a show, and I started partying, and they're like, no, man, don't, no, don't drink too much, and the next thing you know, we go in the back, and um, they had a whole drum set up, and a whole guitar rig, and a, and a bass rig, and um, come to the back of me, I don't know if y'all weird, but yeah, we went, to the, we went to the back, and they had all this stuff, and we just start jamming on a groove, and I think it was Goliath, dude. I really think it was. I don't remember what it was, dude. He had a name for it. There was another name I couldn't remember at the time. And then um, he was like, "We're gonna play that tonight." And before I've been used to sitting in with my drum teachers and like Dennis and like all the people who ever asked me to sit in on their gigs. So that wasn't really that crazy because by that time I was like 22, 23. So I've been sitting in for 10 years with people. So he's like, "You want to sit in?" And all right, cool. And you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers had a huge crowd, but I never. Like, you know, if you want to do it, you don't trip. Like, we're not, you know, we played in the rain, and um, 
the lead singer would always cry. It's the rain, dude. I might fall. We might get electrocuted. I'm like, dude, I used to watch so many 80s hair metal bands on, on MTV, dude. I love playing in the rain. The cymbals all wire coming off the cymbals. And the time hit the time of the cymbals. You know? I love that. So for me, I was always I was always ready for that. I'm like, oh, this is like this is easy because you know, you know, some people think they're ready for certain things, but I was totally ready for it, so it wasn't really anything. And so we played the groove for 30 minutes, and I was like, we're gonna play this for 30 minutes. The moment I hit the first beat, the lead singer runs around the crowd and starts grabbing people's babies, grabbing people's glasses, <laughs> grabbing people's drinks, and throwing it. It was, I'm on the drums actually mortified, like, dude, <laughs> I wasn't even tripping off myself. And um, after the gig, they were like, you want to play? And I was like, yeah. And then we ended up going back to, uh, to my house, which sounds weird again. And, uh, and then like we, uh, we rehearsed for two weeks, and um, we went to Australia. And I was like, my first leg with the Mars. And it was kind of crazy, because it was just like happened so fast. I didn't really, I didn't know what I was doing the whole time, dude. I was just doing it. And then I started going, and people would be like, oh, man, he sucks. Look at John Theater. He's better, blah, blah, blah. And I never cared because I didn't know. Like, you know, you got it. Like, some people, like, they take things too seriously, man. Like, this is fun for me. Like, I've never had a day job. I never wanted a day job. I never, when I see people wake up at 8 o'clock to go to a day job, I kind of, like, be like, damn, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> so for me, this was the funnest thing I could probably think of. I'm going to Australia to go play the drums, eat seafood all day, and, and it's sunny. You know what I'm saying? I'm juice. Next question, I'm sorry. The Memorials record is done and mastered. It's just that we're waiting to see what label we're gonna sign to, because it's like you could it, we could easily give it to you on the internet, but it's like we like when I first put the band together, I wanted to put together a band with people who, you know, didn't care and wasn't weathered. And I, I keep saying weathered because I watch people be weathered and it sucks so bad. Because there's so many things you could be doing that's worse than going on the road and playing in front of a thousand people. And there's so many things that's worse than a thousand people asking you for an autograph. And there's so many things that's worse than somebody just saying, I love your music. You know what I'm saying? And for you, you know, for the, to be in a band, yeah. Yeah. And, and to be in a band that spent, you know, the majority of the time I was in the band being some mysterious geniuses that, you know, I don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? I walked up to Tony Williams when I was 10 years old and he shook my hand and talked to me like I was a grown person. So I, it's kind of weird when I see some other guy and he's like, no, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna sign autographs. I'm just tripped out by that. So for me, it's like, I wanted to be in a band with people who I knew if, like if we weren't gonna do nothing and we had no budget and we were gonna get in a van and we tape the bumper to the van and go tape the trailer to the van, I knew they were down. So <laughs> I put together my friends who, you know, I could have easily did 